G'day and welcome back for another Space Engineers tutorial. Today I'm going to be looking at all the broadcast systems in Space Engineers. We've got antennas, we've got beacons, and we've got laser antennas. And I'm going to be taking a look at how they all work and why you might use each one and where. This pinkish purple contraption here has an antenna, projector, and a beacon. The antenna and the projector are connected so that when I turn them on, the projector is showing me the range that the antenna is set to broadcast to, which is just 12.5 meters, because that makes it very easy to demonstrate what I'd like to about these systems. In Space Engineers, you have systems that can send a signal, systems that can receive a signal, and any that can send and receive acts as a relay between two other broadcast points. So in this instance, we've got our antenna, set to 12 and a half meters and I can see it on my HUD. If I step outside that range, it's no longer visible. Step back inside, it comes back. If I'm inside that range, because this is an antenna that allows send and receive, I can press K, go to remote access, or press shift K and take myself straight to that menu. I can then access the terminal of this grid and do all the sorts of things you would normally be able to do from accessing it through a control panel or accessing it through a seat. Or a cockpit. If we compare that to a beacon, which I've turned on, and which you can see, I've set up to about the same range. On, off, beacon goes on, beacon goes off. When the beacon is on, if I now go to that remote access terminal page, I cannot do anything. And that's because the beacon only sends out a signal. It can't receive a signal from my suit, so I can't send it commands to show me the terminal. I can't send it to commands to change something in the terminal. Similarly to this unknown signal over here. It can send it, but it can't receive anything. If I now switch this antenna back on, and then switch this one on, we can see the relay function. The purple antenna's range just barely crosses the position of the yellow antenna as you can see more clearly from above. You can see those purple lines just, just get to that antenna. So you can see, I now have two antenna signals on my HUD, even though I'm outside the range of that purple antenna. And I can also access both of the grids that have their antennas on. And this relay function is not limited to just a single antenna relay. We can go through, I actually don't think there's limit. I think you can go through as many as you want. In this instance, we have the purple one transmitting to the yellow one, the yellow one transmitting to the green one, the green one transmitting to the blue one, the blue one transmitting to Steve when I turn his suit signal on, and then Steve transmitting it all to me. Because your personal suit antenna acts just the same as a regular antenna, and it goes out to a maximum range of 200 meters. So if I'm anywhere within 200 meters of Steve, I can connect to anything that Steve can connect to as long as he keeps his broadcast on. Let's separate these so that we can see it a bit clearer. I'm now at 195, 200 lose signal. Back inside that 200 meters range and I get my signal back. And I can still access all of these terminals because Steve's suit is relaying that information to me. Now, antenna have the ability to turn off broadcast, so that includes your suit. If I turn off broadcast by pressing O, or if I turn off Steve's broadcast by pressing O, you'll see that I lose the relay, and I also lose Steve's HUD marker. Turn it back on, comes back, turn it off. In the case of my own personal suit, what this means is that people can't see me through my radio broadcast, but also, I can't access remote controls because I'm not broadcasting any commands for a distant terminal to be able to interpret. So I need to turn that on if I want to be able to access and control anything at a distance. This is not the case if you're sitting in a seat or a cockpit because in that instance, it comes down to the ship that you're in or the grid that you are on, not your suit. One last thing to look at here is what happens if we break the chain. So if we get rid of this green antenna here, anywhere within this blue one's range, I can see just it. Or, because Steve's still standing in there, anywhere within Steve's range, I can still see it. But we can't see these yellow and purple ones because there's nothing relaying their signal to us with that green one out of the chain. Similarly, if I go back over here, I can see 
the yellow, the purple, the blue, and Steve, because Steve's transmitting to me. Let's turn off Steve. He's confusing things. Stop confusing things, Steve. Now I can see the purple, the yellow, and not the blue, because there's nothing to relay its signal to me with Steve's antenna off. And now that we've looked at that, you should have a bit of an understanding of how the broadcast, uh, receive, and send signals work in Space Engineers. We can talk about each block and where it can be useful, and where it might be useless. So starting with the beacon. This thing is particularly useful for identifying the location of a mobile grid. And I specify mobile here because if you're needing the location of a base, press K, go to GPS, and click new from current position while you're standing in the base. Because that GPS is invisible to other players, does not cost you anything in terms of power or resources, so it's a lot better. <laughs> and your base doesn't move, so you don't need a beacon. Similarly, if you want to just a quick way of doing that, type slash GPS and then type the name of the GPS. You'll have a GPS signal. But if you're on a mobile grid, you're going to need something that moves with the grid because GPS doesn't do that. And that's what a beacon can do. A beacon is a low power option for identifying the location of something that moves. Because beacons only use 20 kilowatts to go out to 200 kilometers. So you'll be able to find something and go and pilot it if you say, I don't know, you were flying back to base, you ran out of oxygen and you died. <laughs> now you need to go and find your ship. Having a beacon on board can be really, really handy. And they don't use up much power, so your grid should continue broadcasting for a long, long time. There's a bit of a niche use case for beacons as well. If you have a base or something in the distance that you need to know the status of it at any particular time, it can be quite handy to have that grid trigger a beacon when that thing happens. So say for example you've got a mining rig set up and you want to know when the inventory is full, you'd set up that grid so that when the inventory is full, it turns on a beacon, you can then see that marker on your HUD and you're like, oh. My inventory is full at that thing. I should probably go collect some of that, those resources and bring them home. The advantage of that compared to say a light or an alarm is that you can see it at much greater range. The disadvantage is so can everybody else. Next up we've got the regular antenna block. So that's this one, the dish and the small grid variant of this that you've seen just down here. As we saw before, these allow for relay of signal and they allow for remote access to terminals and also to remote controls. So anytime you want to set up a drone, you'll need to have an antenna network that allows you to get a signal to your remote grid from where you are at and from your remote grid to where you are at. So that'll be through antennas the whole way. Antenna systems are really quite handy if you want to have remote access to a grid to do things like remotely open a door as you're coming back. If you've got a big hangar door that you need to get out of the way, remotely turn off turrets if you're bringing back loot that might get shot up otherwise. Not that I've ever had that happen. Nope, never. Nope. And antennas can give you a degree of protection against lightning strike if you're crazy enough to leave that setting enabled. And finally, we have our laser antenna. These are quirky little beasts. Uh, this is the large grid version, and the small grid version you can see are these little bauble looking things that are stuck on top of all of these rovers. For laser antennas to function, you must establish a connection between a pair of them. To do that, there are two different methods available to you. The first is to go to the grid of one of these, find the laser antenna on board, and click copy my coordinates. We can then go back to the original grid, navigate through to the laser antenna and click paste coordinates. It will then instantly start rotating towards and searching for that laser antenna at the other end and connect to it with a cost that is dependent on the distance between the two. Because laser antenna have an infinite range. We're now connected to this laser antenna on the rover, which means I can do all the usual things that you can do through a remote connection. So if I sit on this grid that has this laser antenna, I can go through shift K, I can go to the terminal and I can control this rover now. Or I could even take control of the remote on it. 
But this also gives me an opportunity to show you another way you can connect two laser antennas. If we turn on both the antenna on the rover and the antenna on this grid, I can then turn this back to idle, which loses the connection, as these have both now reset. And because there is a regular antenna network between these two, if I select the laser antenna base and scroll down, you'll see that there are now known receivers. If I turn off the antenna, there are none. Turn it on, and it returns. What's happening here is the two regular antenna are relaying the locations of the other laser antennae to each other, which allows us to simply click on that and click connect, rather than having to go through the process of copying and pasting the coordinates. Obviously, the use case for this is a bit limited because sometimes you're going to be wanting to use a laser antenna because they have this infinite range. So you'll be wanting to use them when you couldn't connect with a regular antenna. However, if you're using a laser antenna on a mobile grid, you could establish this connection using a standard antenna system at short range. Once established, turn off those antenna and just rely on the laser antenna. Assuming you don't want to just do the copy paste coordinates because which really isn't that hard. With these two laser antenna connected, you can see that they continually follow each other. As I turn, they're looking at each other. That one on the base keeps looking at me. The one on the back of the truck keeps looking at the base. They'll attempt to re-establish connection anytime they've got a break. Now I'm gonna do something that I don't normally do in a tutorial, and I'm gonna load up with a mod just to help us visualize that connection and what breaks it. Right now you can see there is nothing showing between them, and that is the normal behavior. And now with the mod active, you can see that there is quite the strong laser beam connecting these two, which just helps us see when things get in the way. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in having this mod in your own save. So as we drive around, you'll see that when I go behind this, we lose our connection. As I appear on the other side, the two should attempt to re-establish connection, but the antenna block is still in the way. Once we get past here... Blam! Reconnected. And now you can understand why I put this mod on, because wow is that easier to see. <laughs> so as long as you keep no blocks between the two, as long as you keep no voxels between the two, we'll be able to have a nice connection between these two at any range. Now as we're driving away, you can see that the laser antenna power usage is going to continue to increase. It's at 2.81 kilowatts now. Let's get up some speed so we can change it a bit more quickly. Up to 5.11, and it will keep increasing in a linear fashion until we hit 200 kilometers. And then it goes up quadratically, which means it goes to crazy levels. It is entirely possible for the consumption levels to get up into the hundreds of megawatts. That's the level where you need many large reactors to keep things running. In my experience, the voxel connection and disconnection between the laser antenna is not as reliable as the grid interruption. So you may find that you'll get connections when you didn't think you should, and you'll lose connections sometimes when you didn't think you should, based on voxel things, but grid-based stuff is pretty accurate. For those of you familiar with things like getting sunlight through a planet, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. If you have power problems, you're probably going to have disconnection problems. <laughs> Hopefully this will allow you guys to build some cool stuff with laser antennas and actually make use of them when you want to and potentially give you some insight to be able to troubleshoot them when they go weird. I've got a bunch more tutorials planned, but if you've got any other ideas of things I should redo from tutorials five years ago, like this one, or any other blocks you'd like me to do a bit of a deep dive or block systems you'd like me to do a deep dive on, let me know. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Unless I blind myself with a laser first. Oh, yep, there we go. Break it with my engineer. Keep breaking it. And it's back.